Hello and welcome to the Alpha Anywhere demo and Q&A webcast. I'm Dave McCormick, VP of Product Management here at Alpha Software, and I'm pleased to be joined today by Sarah Mitchell, our Director of Customer Success. Today, Sarah is going to be continuing our conversation about doing uh, geography searches in a list, but we're also here to answer your questions. So you can type those questions right into the questions box of the GoToWebinar control panel. So let's get started, Sarah. I can already see your screen. Uh, so oh, fantastic. take it away. All, All right. right. Well, let's resume that screen share. <laughs> Welcome, right. everybody. Welcome to the Alpha Anywhere demo and Q&A live webcast. Uh, as Dave mentioned, we are going to be continuing uh, the geography search um, content we talked two weeks ago, uh, if you were there, uh, about using it in a grid. And the number one question everyone had was, what about a list? And uh, it's it's a bit of work to get it to work in the list, but but not hard. Uh, so we'll, we're going to go into that, how you would build a search interface today and, and query that, that location data in your database. Uh, but before we do that, I did want to mention briefly that Alpha DevCon 2022 is around the corner and we'd love for you to register and join us. Um, if you haven't already gotten your tickets, uh, you can go to uh, our website, uh, www.alphasoftware.com slash DevCon 2022 to register. Uh, it's going to be an exciting DevCon this year, a remote session again, but I'm hoping to see everybody there. Uh, I'm excited for what we're going to be talking about. So anyway, today we'll be talking about geography search part two. And specifically uh, with the list, as a review of last time, if you didn't join us, if you didn't miss, miss the webinar, you can certainly catch the recording on YouTube or this recording in the future if you have to bow it early. But uh, just to recap, geospatial data, uh, this is information that describes objects or events or other features with a location on or near the Earth's surface. So that could be a location, uh, a lap longitude location, a line segment, which could be uh, maybe a route along the number of points, which would be lo uh, geographic locations on the planet, or polygon data, which would be like a perimeter specified by multiple uh, points on the Earth's surface. Uh, we, we talk about geospatial data as part of GIS, uh, geo geographic information services. Um, there's a lot of um, cool things you can do with it. In terms of storing data, there is support in ELF Anywhere for doing geography searching specifically, and that data needs to be stored either as a geography data type if it's available, or geometry, which is a more abstract data type that not only lets you specify your um, line point or polygon data, but also what um, space it exists within. We assume in Alpha Anywhere that if you've got a geometry field, it's storing geography data. Uh, so that's just an important thing to note. Uh, data space support out there is, it's not supported everywhere and what you can or can't do with it varies significantly between different database systems. But if you're using SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, Postgres, SQL, MySQL, and I believe MariaDB, then you have access to geometry and geography data storage. Last week, we or not last week, two weeks ago, we talked about grids. This week, we're talking about geography searching and lists. Um, the list does have a feature that we saw with the grid where it lets you encode locations, which are latitude and longitude values, as geography data. Uh, but what it doesn't have is um, a built-in search UI like you see with the grid. Uh, so you would, you would need to build your own, but as you're going to learn today, it's not as hard as you think. And we're going to actually do a demo where we build an interface that does a radius search, like we saw off the grid, where you click on it and it places a point and draws a little circle around the marker for you. And we're going to talk about how we set that up. And then as a quick review, uh, these are some of the functions we're going to work with today. We're not going to use uh, create polygon or geog location is within polygon, but these are the functions that the grid uses when it performs that search on the back end. These are portable SQL functions. And what they let you do is search location data or uh, geography data stored in that geography or geometry field and um, search it for records that match. So like with the geog location is within the radius. If you have a field where you've stored the latitude and longitude location as an encoded 
point uh, of geography data, then geog location is within radius will let you search your database and it will return every record that contains a location that's within X meters of a specified point. And that, that secondary point, that location, uh, is something you create yourself. Uh, we're going to use the geog create location today to generate that point. But with with those two pieces, you can you can do a lot um, with your data. So we're in Alpha Anywhere now, and we're looking at a project, um, geospatial search project that we created um, last week or two weeks ago. I'm going to keep saying last week, but it was two weeks ago. <laughs> so I apologize. Um, but if you guys were there for that uh, webinar, just as a quick review. We had built this airports grid demo where you could, um, using this search thing over here, search all this data in this grid uh, to give you points. Uh, let's do a search here. So, um, oh, this is set to one mile. Let's set it to 10 miles. Set. So this is Chicago. We do a search and it's returning all of the airports from my airports database that were within that radius specified on this interface. This interface is built for you uh, within the grid. Um, we talked about how you could figure out what the SQL query was behind the scenes that's being generated uh, to do these searches. And in particular, we mentioned that there's in this where clause, we saw that this geog location is within radius location. Location is the field in our database that contains the point that we're searching. And then it uses geog create location with two, um, two values, a longitude and a latitude value. And then this last parameter is the distance from that location in meters uh, to search within. So we're gonna take that information that we learned and we're gonna build uh, a list that has that same search interface. So here's the example we're going to go through today. We'll talk about how we built how I built the search, how the list itself was created. It's going to look pretty similar. I apologize that things are loading a little bit slow. My computer is struggling a little bit today. But here's that same map interface. We've got our point. There's a radius drawn about it. We click search. It's going to filter our list, only give us those results from the database that match. Now, important to note, and some of you may have already caught this, that search with Portable SQL happens on the server. So this isn't really going to work offline. To do an offline search, um, you're going to have to do something else that can happen in JavaScript. But if you have a connection to your server, to your database, then you can add this into your apps, web or mobile. Um, and provide this kind of functionality, and and the stuff that we have here, like we have, you can we can move this, uh, you can change the radius, you could make it meters instead of of miles, which um, you're gonna have to zoom way in there to see it. But all this functionality is um, fairly easy to add to the list uh, to the UX. Uh, the hardest part. I think is just getting the JavaScript right to make that query to filter your data, but everything else for us here, including this um, this feature here where we can pick a pick a location in the United States and search it. So this this all uses a lot of um, built-in things for us already. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do. I've got lots of time. Uh, before I continue, though, did anybody have any any questions about geography data itself? Yeah, no questions specific to this. So. All right, yeah, I want to make sure everybody is, we're on the same page about what, what that data is. All right, so we'll take a look at this list here, and then we'll we'll put it together. This This list is just driven off of the airports database, which is available to you. We have um, links for downloading it in the documentation, I believe. Uh, but it contains a list of airports and their the, the airport code, the name of the city, country where it's located. They're all airports within the United States, uh, and it within that data. Let, let's expand the SQL statement here. There is something called location, which is your geography field that's that's encoded, and then we also store latitude and longitude as separate values. And then there's also an elevation thing, which we we're not going to use, um, but 
And just to give you an idea, this is being pulled from a SQL Server database where this is all stored. But here's our, our location field. You see it's like point. That's how it's stored in the, in the system. But over here, our latitude and longitude is broken out for us. In terms of the list layout here, we're just using code name, city, and state. Um, I did mention that you can encode your data. So if this list had a detail view, which is important, you have to have a detail view to edit your data. Do you see here, if we come over, maybe it's this guy here. There is a place. I should have written down the location. No, I should have written down the location for you. Um, men, Dion ran across this the other day when he was doing his presentation last week on, on lists, and I saw it, and now I can't remember where I saw it, and I should have looked this up. But there is a setting in here where you can say, this field, location P, is actually um, location that's encoded uh, with your with a latitude and longitude value and you give it your latitude and longitude field and it will encode that into your database whenever you change that location. The search part is really the piece that we have to build to make geography search work and it consists of a number of things. It, it has a map which shows us that point and the radius around it of what you're searching. It's got location, which is our actually our address of where that point is located if you want to pick an address and search it. Uh, the radius, which is some, some distance away from the location, and with that is associated some units. I've, we're going to look at um, the same units that the grid has. The grid includes kilometers, miles, meters, and yards. Those last two may not be of use. Um, when you're looking for an airport, if you're searching in yards, but uh, just as an example of how you would convert those different types of units into the type you need on the back end and those functions which take meters. Uh, we're gonna look at that. And we have a search and we have a clear filter. These do um, a server side search. And then the last thing that's in here are these, these two fields here, there's a lat and a lawn. And the reason they're here is so that we can easily capture and store the latitude and longitude of either the address, if we enter an address in the location, or the latitude and longitude of where that marker has been moved on the map by the user. So let's start with a new component. We'll start from the ground up here. We'll create a new web component on the web project control panel. We're gonna start with a UX component. We're gonna start with a blank UX component. We're not gonna start with any kind of framework. And we're going to set up two things here. First, we're going to set up our list layout using a panel layout, with two panels in it. The one on the left will be our searching, on the right will be our list. And then we'll add in our list, set up the data we want to see in there, and then start working on the map and all the search fields. So um, on the controls pane, on the left-hand side here, you have add control, which is a newer one, but some of you who have been around for a while, uh, maybe used to the panels, uh, you know, picking panels out of here or or data controls. We're just going to use add control today because this is by far the fastest way to find things to add them. So let's start with building out our panels. So we'll start with a panel layout. And I'll, up here in the filter, we'll type panel and we'll pick panel layout. Click OK. And then we'll add to that two panels. Panel card one. We'll insert after the selected control. I'm going to rename this panel search. And then add a second one. We'll insert after the closing, the panel end card here, and then we'll rename this uh, panel airports. And while I have this panel card selected the opening tag for panel card airports, we're gonna add our list. So we'll go in here and we'll look for list. We'll 
call it airports. And I just need one control. Let's do it here. Let's go airports, uh, airports, though we don't need a label, so I'm going to leave this on none. And then we'll go through the quick setup genie to set this up. Our connection string is our airports database. And the table that we want from that is our US airports table. And in there, we're just going to select everything. We're going to bring all the data down into our list. And that's all we're going to do here. I'll click OK and let that generate for us. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go into this list and we're going to first fill the container so it takes advantage of the entire panel. And then go into list properties and clean up the list layout a little bit. We'll take out some of these fields. So we don't, we don't need latitude and longitude, elevation or location. Um, it's not really meaningful to display to the user. And we don't really need ID, but having the code with the name, the city, and the state, we're going to take country out of there because these are all US airports. And we don't need that information. But we'll, we'll have these four fields in here. We'll just keep the, the basic columnar layout. And that is it for setup here. And I'll click OK. So if we, lie, if we go and look at this in working preview now, We'll see a list of airports on the right-hand side and a blank area on the left. There's our airports. So, panel search is where we're going to build out our search interface. And the thing I think I'd like to start with first is building out that location field where we enter our address and generate the latitude and longitude values from that so that we can use it in a search. So we'll start with add control and we'll add some text boxes. And I'm going to create multiple controls at once. I'm going to create one called location, one called lat, and one called lon, L-O-N. Click OK. And the other thing I'm going to do is remove all of these breaks after so they appear on the same line. And if you're not familiar with it, there's a little button up here. It's called toggle break. You can click it to quickly add or remove a break after a control to put everything on the same line or put it on a new line. So these are three fields. Let's turn on labels for these guys. Uh, let's put the position above. And I'm going to copy this using this paste properties tool up here to the latitude and longitude controls as well. And then we're going to set up location. So you may have noticed when I was typing in the location field in the, the demo of what we're going to build today that it was showing a list of addresses. And that is um, that is a built-in feature uh, for text boxes. It's called a, it's a special type. Um, if you select a text box and convert to text box properties, there's a special type section down here. If you expand it, there's an option called Google Address Suggest. And what this does is it makes a, as you're typing in your address, it goes and sends that off to Google and say, hey, you know, send me similar addresses to this location. Um, so if you pick this and then it exposes the special type settings where you can configure it. And there is a lot you can do with this. And I think this might be something that some people are uh, not aware of. Um, or maybe you're using it and there are things in here that you're not aware of. So I thought it'd be great to kind of show you how this can help um, or add add functionality to your app that is mostly expected by a lot of people when you go into a site and you start typing an address, or at least with, with Google search, it does suggest addresses to you. So this is the, the settings screen for building this up. It's got a lot of stuff in here when, when you, um, when the user selects an address from that list, it gets all sorts of information. It gets um, the address broken out into postal co code, country, locality, um, street, second, secondary street numbers. You get the latitude and longitude. It gives you map URLs. You can get a listing of all the images that you could see of that location on, on Google Maps. So there's a lot of information that comes back from it. And there's a variety of ways you can get it out. You can assign it um, to a control in your component. So up here we have street number, route, uh, sublocality level one. All of these could are 
parts of that address and you could actually map these directly to UX controls. So if somebody searches for an address using this text box, you can automatically populate all that information into controls that maybe they're part of a list detail view uh, or you're filling in a form, whatever. Um, that, that information is all available to you. Uh, there's also some other pieces that come back like the latitude and longitude. Uh, which we do want to capture, and we're going to store these into our latitude and longitude controls so that this is where we're going to capture the lat and long for our um, both our search and plotting that location on our map. But there's a few other um, things in here, and something I wanted to take advantage today is to add an address filter. So all of the locations in our database of US airports are only in the United States. So it doesn't make any sense to suggest an address that's in China or Germany or, or Russia or South America or you know, um, uh, Egypt. It, it, none of those locations make any sense because they're gonna be really, really far away. And especially if you're on uh, out in Asia or Europe or Africa, you're not gonna be able to drive to them. So it, we're gonna limit that search filter for this lookup to just the United States locations. And the filter set syntax is a small piece of JSON data you need to enter. And you can figure out what that syntax is by clicking this help on filter, filter syntax link in the UI and it gives you some examples. So up here it says country AU postal code 2000. Excuse me. So this is just how you enter it. So it's curly brace, country colon, and then in quotes, the country code. If you don't know what your country code is, there's a country ISO codes link right here that you can use to, to find it or to look it up. And we needed one for United States and it's US, but just so that we can verify, you come down here, you, you select it, this is your ISO code. You can copy this out of here. We'll take note of this and then we'll type in our filter, country colon US. So this will only return addresses in that lookup from the United States. One final thing we're gonna note is this after Google address select um, tip up here, there is a uh, client side UX event that gets triggered after the user selects an address from the list. It's called after Google address select. And we're gonna utilize this later to update the map marker location when the user picks an address. Pardon me. <laughs> I turned the page for my notes and I turned to the wrong page. There we go. Okay, so in terms of setup, we're gonna add our filter here. We're gonna assign the latitude and the longitude into those um, UX controls. Hey, just a quick that's question. That's all we need to do here. If, yes. um, if you wanted to have two countries like the US and Canada, because conceivably you could drive from Canada to uh, one of the ones, is it just a comma or is it, how does that work? That's a good question. I don't know if you can specify two. Oh, okay. Well, we can look into that. Well, we'll look into that. That's yep. a really good question. Yeah, all the examples in here just show one. Yeah, uh, I okay. will make a note yeah. to figure that out for you later. <laughs> Excellent, thanks. I'm sure you can. Yeah, okay, very cool. Thanks for bearing with me. <laughs> All right. So yeah, this is, we're done setting this up here. We've got everything we need. I'm gonna click okay and save this. And then we're gonna quickly preview it. And for those of you that are, are wondering, I do have a Google Maps API key. I've set it up, it's in my project properties. You do need one to use these features uh, specifically because latitude and longitude are uh, 
a, a geocoding feature that you have to have an API key for. Uh, if you're plotting markers on a map, uh, Google Maps will let you do that without an API key in a developer mode. But once you get into their geocoding uh, functionality, you do have to have that API key. You're gonna need to set it up in your development environment. So let's look for a location here. Let's look for Boston. We'll select that option and there's our latitude and our longitude. So this is this is working. This is exactly what we want. Um, we could, uh, Dave, what's a, a city outside the United States? Um, Cairo, and since you mentioned Egypt. Cairo. No Cairo, Egypt, but we got West Egypt Street in Cairo. Cairo. Nebraska. Nebraska. <laughs> so there's that filter in action, right? So I, I was only given USA locations, uh -huh. um, which is which we do want. Um, and it, it can be it can be a, a, a broad broad term like Los Angeles. If you also want to put an address in here, like North Main Street, where we are, Providence, Rhode Island. Um, again, to, you can get as specific as that. Uh, with this. There was a question about how accurate um, the GPS is in general um, on phones and stuff like that. And uh, someone was asking, can we get like within a meter of accuracy? And I just doing some quick research, it looks like it's still it's still not quite that good. I mean, the, the mathematics will support it, but just if you're trying to use a phone device to get, you're, you're probably still within about five meters or so. The, yeah, there's going to still be a little bit of variance in there. Um, yeah. I don't know what more you could do with that. Because the more accurate you want your location, the longer it does take to get it. So that's, that's something right. to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So we got our we got our, our address lookup. It's it's encoding the address into a location which we want to plot on a map. So let's do that piece next. Let's add our map. So I'm going to add control. I'm going to go look for a map. And there's our map. And I'm gonna make a new single control. I'm gonna call it search map uh, without a tick mark in it. Uh, I'm gonna give it a label, but we're not gonna display it. I'll click okay. I'm gonna move that up above location. And I'm gonna make its width 100%. So it fills the full width of the panel card. And we're going to come down here and just go through a few of these. We're going to change this initial zoom out to nine. And we are going to center the map on a location initially. And that's going to be uh, Chicago, because that was the example we used uh, last, last time. We're going to click geocode address here so we can get that latitude and longitude value out of this initial map position. Go ahead and save that. And if we quickly preview that, the map should be centered over Chicago, but you're not going to see a marker because we haven't added a marker yet. So there's Chicago. So the sort of just setting this up initially, we're going to do a little bit of magic. We're going to set a default value of Chicago, Illinois on our location. And our, our latitude and longitude, we're going to take these values out of this map, and we're going to set that in our latitude and longitude default values. And the reason for this is because when that map initially loads, we want it centered somewhere, and we'd like to have a marker there. And this location is arbitrary. It, it could really be any location you want. So there's our latitude. Longitude, we'll work in preview one more time and then we'll start building the, adding the map marker. So there we go. Chicago and this seems reasonable, right? It, like I'm looking at Chicago, my location says Chicago down there. So that's, that's good. So, um, oh, before we do that, let's also add in the, before we get to the coding parts, <laughs> let's add in a control for our um, our distance. Uh, so we're going to call this one radius. 
and it's a numeric, we'll put the label above. And so this will be that, that place where we enter 10 or 12 something, and that something is the unit. So let's remove the break here so it's next to our location control, and we'll add one more control. We'll add a drop down box, and we'll call this one units. We'll put a label above it called units, click OK. Move that break on radius. And then here, we're just going to set up a static list of choices, uh, km, miles, meters, and yards. And we'll set our default value to miles. And let's set our default radius as well. Let's make it 10. There we go. So initially, we're going to show a map marker on that map with a default uh, location of Chicago, Illinois, with a radius drawn around it, 10 miles. So how are we going to do that? We're going to use Action JavaScript. But um, as you may notice, there's no like event here that seems obvious where we need to insert that. So we're going to create it as a JavaScript action. And JavaScript actions are a way to uh, publication. All right. Uh, JavaScript actions are a way to take advantage of action JavaScript uh, and really insert it anywhere that you can write JavaScript in your application. And the way you create that is you can go through JavaScript actions or anywhere where you're in um, the JavaScript editor, there's an option to access this. Uh, but here in your define JavaScript actions, you create a new action, you give it a name, and then you click edit action. And this opens up the action JavaScript editor where you can take advantage of all the things we have built in. And one of those actions that we have built in is this Google map method UX component. And this method, uh, this, this action can be used to add a marker to the map. And this is what we want. So we're going to get the location for this marker from controls on our component, our latitude and longitude controls specifically. Um, the controls to read defines what those controls are. Uh, up here, if you read this, there is, a, um, there is an order you need to select things because there's no way to say, like, this is latitude and this, this is longitude. So the, the order in which you select those controls is important. So if we're looking at two controls here, this is where it talks about latitude and longitude value. So the first control can be the latitude value, and the second control will be the longitude value. And that's the order we need to select them. So we're going to pick lat and then lon, and then OK. That's lat and lon. And the last thing we need to set is that the data type is latitude and longitude. So this is setting up, specifying where this marker is going to be placed on the map. And then the last thing we need to do is set the marker settings to apply that radius and uh, a few other things. So in here, there's a bunch of things you can set on marker properties. I sometimes will come in here and give them a group name. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't get used uh, nearly as often as this property down here, which I should have talked about briefly for opening this marker name, my marker one. Every marker has a unique name. Uh, so we're going to keep the default because we're only placing the one marker. But one thing that we are going to do in here is we're going to turn on overlay circle. And this, if you check this box, there's a little plus sign that appears next to it. And if you expand it, you have all these settings, including overlay circle size, what the fill color should be, is it transparent, uh, the stroke color, which is the border around it, how, how wide is that, and then how how transparent is that as well. So we're going to just stick with 10 mi. We're going to hard code this here because there, if you look down here, there's there's nowhere you can specify a function to call in, in here. And that's a problem for us because we do want to read a, the radius value out and the units and do some maths uh, to pass that into this function. And I'm going to show you how you do that in a minute. Uh, but first, what we're going to do is we're going to set this up to make sure that it's 
drawing the, the marker exactly how we want it and is making any appropriate calls into JavaScript to update our latitude and longitude values if that marker gets moved. So for fill color, we're going to go with some presets I have in here. Um, if you've never used palettes in the color picker, highly recommend. I, I saved all sorts of in here and I like to just pick from them. So we're going to pick this green that I've got. For our fill color, we're going to make the opacity something something less than one. One is full opacity, can't see through it. Uh, zero is completely transparent. We're going to make it 0 0.4. And then for our stroke color, we're going to pick that same green and we're going to leave the width and the opacity alone. If you don't change the fill color and the stroke color and the fill opacity, you will have a black circle on your map. Just as a heads up, if you turn this on and you're wondering why there's a black circle on your map, that's what happened. Now, the other thing we're going to enable is draggable so that the user can click on that marker and move it around the screen. So this is our setup for uh, how the marker looks and how you can interact with it. So the next thing we're going to look at is what happens when they've moved it. We need to capture that location data and we need to put it in our Latin lawn uh, controls because those are the controls that hold the, the information that we need to use to query our database to filter our list. And the, the place we're going to capture that is on drag in. So after the user has moved the marker somewhere and has stopped dragging it. So we expand this here. This is a, a client side event. It's implemented with JavaScript. And in here, there's some example code, which we're, this is all we need to um, do what we need to do with uh, getting the values out to set in our controls. So we're going to take this example code. paste it here. I'm going to add semicolons to it because I have JavaScript syntax validation on and it does require uh, those semicolons. But what we're going to do is we're going to get the latitude, the longitude values out of where that marker location is now. And we're just going to set the value in our latitude and longitude fields. So we'll do dialog object, set value, uh, lat will be lat, and then dialog object, Set value lawn LNG. So that's all we need to do here in drag in to capture that new marker location and save it in our controls. We'll click OK to save it. We'll keep all the other system defaults here. We don't really need a group name. The marker icon is going to be the default red one that you see on Google Maps. Click OK and save that. Um, keep the default marker name bring marker into view. We're going to save this, click OK, um, save it again. Our JavaScript action has now been implemented, so now we can call it. And the f we're going to call it in a bunch of places. So um, let's click OK here. And let's go back to the map. And on the map control itself, there's an event called on initialize event, which is fired after the map has been loaded and, and, and Google Maps is available to do anything with. And what we want to happen when this map is ready uh, to work with is we want it to plot our Chicago, Illinois location. So what we're going to do, sorry, I blinked on this already. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to call our JavaScript action. And the way you insert the code to call a JavaScript action is with the um, action JavaScript button. So you click action JavaScript, and you can say insert code to run a JavaScript action. But I have to find one. That's not true. All right, let's come over here to JavaScript Actions. Let's click to see the code that is invoked, it, invoked here. Let's copy this code. Click OK. Come back over here to Initialize Event and paste it in. Click OK. So that will run our action to insert it. And the reason why we couldn't do that from that interface, I don't know. I'm going to go um, talk to the team after this about it, because on this map, 
that's exactly what we did. We did dialogue object, run action, plot location. So it does work. So that will plot the map marker when the map is loaded, and we can do a working preview of that. Let's save this too here. Let's do list airports live demo. So it's going to take a moment to load. But once it's loaded, there's our marker. Now remember, we hard coded that radius. Um, so we need to do uh, a little bit of extra work to get the right radius. We also need to do some work to do the search. So let's add the search now. Let's add a button to do the search. Um, let's just do two buttons. Call some search. And then we'll add a second one called clear. Oops, button. And the reason I'm doing this as opposed to inserting the list um, search and clear buttons, and I'm going to change the sub theme on this guy to just be base. The reason we're doing it this way, not going through the, the list, um, is because the list search and clear do uh, a client side filter, and we need to do a server side filter. So with the search button selected, we're going to come in here and we're going to go straight to text mode. And this is where everything gets a little bit harder, uh, but but not, not that hard. Um, so to do the search, we need to do two things. We need to get our search location out, and we need to build the query that we're going to submit to the server to populate our list. And the way you, we are going to do that is using a UX component method called filter list. And it's actually underscore filter list. And what this what this lets you do is specify a um, a SQL uh, where clause as the filter expression. Oops, which is where we can use our portable SQL geography functions. So let's, let's fill this out. So we need uh, we need the latitude, which is in our latitude field. get value, lat, and we need longitude, which is in our longitude field. And from this, we're going to build out our, our query. Um, initially, let's also get radius. Um, And units. Because <clears throat> we have to do a number of things with this. So um, the query itself uh, is is two pieces. So it's we have to create a location as the uh, geography data type that is expected um, for the the search function, which is that. Uh, geolocation is within radius. So geolocation is within radius is the one we're going to use. And I'm going to quickly pull up the documentation for that so we can take a look at it in Portable SQL. So here's the documentation page for portable SQL functions for geographies. And we're looking at poly, uh, geog location is within radius. And um, this takes, it takes four parameters. We're only going to use three. So location is the geography field we're searching. Point is the the center of that circle that we're searching within, and radius is the distance from that center in meters. So knowing that, 
we know our location field in our in our list is location or in our database but that second piece that that point we have to build so the way we're going to build that point is using the geog create location function and if you come back if we come back to documentation and this is a very important thing to to note uh, is that geog create location takes a longitude first and a latitude second which is backwards from how you see it everywhere in the interface and i am guilty of making this mistake all the time I'll pass in latitude first and longitude second, and I get something that makes no sense. So just be aware, and that's that's true of almost all of these functions, possibly all of them. Longitude first, latitude second. So in Alpha Anywhere, the way we're going to do this is we're going to use arguments, um, which is this filter parameters thing. Uh, so here we'll we'll do uh, I almost did it there. Lon and lat, or latitude and longitude, and then the last thing we want to pass in is radius which is a, a value in meters. So that's that's our query. Um, we're searching location at this point with this radius. So we need to set up our parameters next. We'll call it params. And I'm gonna define this as an array. It's a little bit easier to read this. Um, but for the, the format for this filter list function, if we come back in here, is the the parameters here are this it's it's the value you want to uh, that your um the parameter is the parameters value followed by three pipes followed by a letter that tells you what type it is uh, we're going to use ends because all of our parameters in this example are going to be numeric uh, but c would be character the the type is is the x basic type um, which you can get more information about in in documentation and then finally after the type is a is another pipe and then the name of that argument. So in this case, what city is a character type and its value is Boston. And if you have more than one, they're separated by um, slash n, which is JavaScript new line. We're gonna build this out as an array because it's easier to, to view three parameters uh, as entries in an, an array and then joining them together later than it is to write that out all in a single line in this example. But by all means, if you're comfortable putting it in just one line, go for it. So um, we have three params. So we're gonna do params.push. Um, a string here. And it's it's we'll start with lawn, longitude. So we're gonna take the value of lawn um, and then we're gonna add it to a string or concatenate it. It's a type n and its argument name is lon. And we're going to repeat that for latitude as well. So those those two pieces are 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 done. Um, the last one we're going to need a little bit of work to put it in the right format, but we'll put it down here. We'll do radius and radius. So this defines our arguments need to come in here. Let's come down here and, and update this. We're searching the airports list. And we can actually right click there. And it's going to automatically insert airports. If I had more than one list in my UX, it would give me a list drop down to choose from. Our filter expression is filter. We don't have an order expression, so we're going to pass in an empty string. And then params, uh, which we have to do one more thing here uh, before we can pass it in. But we're going to pass in params as that fourth argument. Uh, the last thing we're going to do to params is join it together as a string with a new line separating all the values. And that's done by doing a, a join with a separator slash n. And that's all you need to do to join those things together. The last thing we need to do is, is radius. Uh, radius can have four different units, kilometers, miles, meters, and yards. We only need to convert three of those types if it's in meters it's just gonna just gonna work we have to do anything about that um but i'm gonna save this and go oh let's make sure we have semicolons on the end of everything here uh, i'm gonna save this and go back to that other example I built earlier because it took a while for me to work this out um let's see here i believe i did it took me a, it took me a bit to work this out um so i wanted to just take the work I did earlier and bring it over. 
cancel. Do not save my edits. So go back in our search button. We'll paste this. And I'll just explain what it's doing here. I'm also, I'm going to add a parse int around getting the radius. I'm going to pass in a second value of 10, which just says this is a decimal value. Um, and this is going to take whatever we got out of here. Um, when I was working on this earlier, radius was coming back as a string, despite the fact that I told it it was a number. So this just makes sure that this is a numeric value. So that when we do our maths on it, uh, we get a number and not um, nothing. So uh, in conversion, I just did a Google search if it's kilometers. Uh, a thousand meters is a kilometer. So we need to multiply our kilometers by a thousand to get to meters. Uh, miles and yards, similar um, just multiplier to go from miles to meters or yards to meters. And then um, meters itself, we're not going to do anything there because it's already in the format we need. So we're going to save this. We're going to do a, not a live preview. We're going to do a working preview. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm realizing that we're running out of time. And I had planned for this show a lot more stuff. Uh, but we'll we'll do this first here. There might be a part three then. The, uh, well, we'll just send you the completed component later. So we'll <laughs> okay. wait for this to load here. There we go. Where is Chicago? This is always the case with the live demo when I'm asking too much for it to do. So <laughs> let's just do the search. So the search is going to pull um, the latitude and the longitude, our radius, and this unit of miles. So at this point, if we click search, these are the locations that would appear in that map marker if it was showing up for us. And we'll get to the bottom of that later. Um, but if we wanted to change this now, uh, maybe we wanted to go find everything near Boston and search that. There's our Boston locations. Um, the other thing that we can do when this map gets updated, um, our location here, is if we come over to the client side functions and we find that uh, Google map or after Google address select and just insert the call um, to our JavaScript action. That will update it. And it should recenter the map as well. So let's let's go find. Um, well, let's wait for it to finish loading here. Uh, let's go find Boston. So there's our Boston radius. So now if we search, we get that. So the, the last piece. And I'm really pushing it to the wire because I'm not leaving any time for questions today. Is how do you how do you get that? How do you change the radius? Yeah. And the the way that you do it uh, is you just convert your JavaScript action to JavaScript. And so the way we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to do that. First, I'm gonna duplicate this plot location, and I'm call it plot location custom. We're going to click OK. And I'm just going to come over here and cheat to get um, the code I had to set up earlier to calculate that radius. Because the radius on here, so we go here. If we edit this action, this is true of all, all X in JavaScript. If you switch it over to text mode, you can even just convert one uh, inline into JavaScript. Uh, but yes, we do want to do this. If you could go over to text mode, you have access to the underlying code that's running. And that that radius is this thing here called data, and it's being passed in 10 miles. And so that 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 value um, that you get passed in, it, it can be uh, m for meters, mi for miles. It accepts feet as a unit, and then uh, km as kilometers. So this up here 
uh, sets up our, our units and our radius. And then down here, we can just replace this with radius plus units. Save that and call this instead of plot location. So we'll click OK. Um, come over here to this client site at, and just call this one plot location custom, which is what we named it. Let me verify that. Yep. And do a working preview. Wait for it to load. Yeah, there we go. So now if we go over here and we say Boston, Boston MA, it goes to Boston. But what but what if this had been 15 instead? There we go. What if this was meters? Now it's tiny and you got to zoom way in there to see it. So that's that's how you can get that dynamic radius added. Now, obviously, there's a few more steps we need to do here. We need to go in here and, you know, ideally, if um, we change the radius and we click out, if we have an on blur event, we'd like to update that radius. Uh, and then likewise, if we change the drop down, the on change event, uh, we'd also like to do that, which you can do back in here on those individual controls. So you would. You would come in here to units, you would locate the on change for the drop down, you would add that same call to that um, that action we just made, our custom action, our plot location custom. Uh, same with the radius on blur, which is when the control uses focus. So that's how you can add that in there. But I'd like to open up to questions. I, I don't know if you're okay with going longer than an hour today, Dave. Uh, we should keep within an hour. Um, we okay. do have a couple questions, but they're not directly related to the map one, and I don't know if we're going to get time. One has to do with populating a view box control. Actually, maybe we'll have time to do this one. Hmm. And the question is this. Is it possible to populate a view box control either from a state variable or a control text box area using the obj.populate JavaScript function? I said they've tried it a bunch of times and it didn't have much luck. Hmm. I think we'd need an example for that. Uh, the the view box can be populated from like a JavaScript data source, which would be um, the way you could go go about doing that. Um, in terms mm -hmm. of refreshing the data, there's some limitations around that. Uh, okay. We have an action for the view box that does a refresh, but I believe it only applies to if you have server side. Um, data. Ah, okay. It makes a callback to the server to fetch the data. If you've if you've done a JavaScript um, implementation, you have to you do a, you have to go about it a different way. Well, that's good to know. Excellent. But you, the the pattern is you you populate the view box and you call refresh, so it'll redraw. So maybe mm -hmm. what they're not doing is they're not calling refresh to redraw the data. That's a possibility. Yeah. Um, so that that was one question. We have another question as well, but we are definitely out of time. So just a yeah. reminder, you can send these questions to guides, G-U-I-D-E-S at alphasoftware.com. Sarah, thanks very much for presenting today. This is very interesting. Anyone who has further questions, again, send them over to guides. We hope to see you at our next Wednesday webinar. Until then, take care and stay well. Bye-bye.